In this video I'm going to take a look at what we mean by a first class object in Python. I'm going to consider a first class object in Python by looking at this program and future amendments to it as I move through the video. If we look at the basic structure of the computer program we can see here we have a function and that function has got the name to underscore uppercase and what the function will do it'll take in a string and it'll return that string all in uppercase and here you can see on this line that what I'm doing I'm invoking that function so let's have a look at the runtime and then I'll go through the program describing each line at a time well we can see the computer program execution here the program starts off by executing this line and my underscore text is assigned this string hello world this line will then print out that string as you can see here and it prints out hello world we then come to this line and what this bit of the line will do it'll call this function because we can see that this name is the same as this name here and you can see in brackets that I've got my underscore text which we know on this line was set up to hello world so this will now reference hello world on this line you can see I'm taking what we're passing in in other words the hello world and I'm invoking this upon that string and what this then will do it'll convert the hello world to uppercase and I'm now assigning that uppercase hello world to this variable which I've called uppercase underscore text and on this line you can see we're returning that uppercase underscore text ie the hello world all in uppercase and it will be returned effectively to this position where we then assign it to this variable that I've called returned as uppercase with the appropriate underscores as you can see you can see that this line will print out what's been returned in other words the content of this variable here and we can see that it prints out hello world and you can clearly see that the hello and the world are now all uppercase now if we consider this line this is not a typical program statement you would find when you're implementing an algorithm but what I'm doing here I'm using it to give us some information about this where you can see this is two underscore uppercase so it's going to give us some information about this function here and if we come over to the runtime you can see it tells us this and it's telling us it's a function that's called two underscore uppercase and it's at this now this is an example of a hexadecimal address this here means hexadecimal and this is the address now the address of what well it's the address of where this function is in the computer's memory now if we think of objects for a moment because remember it's always said everything in Python is an object on this line I'm essentially producing a string object and I can look to other aspects of the code and identify the objects that are created but what I want to do now is to do a schematic animation that homes in on the function because in Python a function can be treated as an object or more to the point a function in Python is an object so let's have a look at that aspect of the code you will have noted from my previous videos on this channel that I talk about an execution space and this is essentially the computer's memory in which the code will execute and I represent by this bluish area now when we run this program what will happen this function here will become an object and you can see that this object will have in its center the function code now you would typically see this kind of shape this circular shape not with the word function in the middle but if it was an integer it'd have a number in there like seven so if you said X is assigned seven you would see in this region seven meaning that the integer seven is an object now here what we're saying is the function is an object and what you're getting in the middle of it is the function code now we can see that this function has got a name to underscore uppercase and if I look to the execution space there's going to be relationship between this name and this object 
So let's look at what that relationship is. Well, here you can see the name. Immediately below it, you can see I've got a rectangular area. Now, into this is going to be placed the object reference to the function. And I'm going to represent that here by this arrow. And that's the object reference. And in reality, what it's going to be is this here, this address. Because two underscore uppercase will hold the address of where this function is in the computer's memory. And we're going to see that this name and the function are effectively bound together. We say there's a binding between the name and the function. Now, if you've been looking at my other videos, you'll see that I refer to this a lot when I'm talking about objects. And when we look at a function, it's no difference. In Python, the object and the name are separate. And this separation is usually achieved, well, it is achieved in CPython using a dictionary. So when we consider the function aspect of the program you're looking at here, forget all of the other objects for a moment, this is the relationship we end up with. We have a name which is bound to the object, where the object is the function. And this here is the reference to that function. And this is very similar to how we would look at an integer, which I'll remind you of a little later in this video. To the program that I've just considered, I've added this line. And you can see I'm taking the name of the function and I'm assigning it to this new name that I've introduced in the code. Now, what's going to happen under these circumstances is the following. Let's consider the execution space for this computer program. And I'll be looking at the object with reference to the function. I'll be ignoring all the other objects that are in the code. For example, I'll take no note of this object here. I won't show that in the execution space. But what I will be looking at is this. We know we're going to get an object that represents the function. We know separate from this, there's going to be the name of the function. And that will hold an object reference that will point to where the function is in the computer's memory. And we say these are bound together. Now, when we get to this line, something else is going to happen. And I'm going to show that now. I'm going to extend the execution space because I'll need more room here. And what we will get occurring is the following. We're going to get this name being created. And we can see that to this name in the code, I'm assigning this. Now, what will be assigned is this arrow here, this object reference. And we can see that will be copied to here. Now, the effect of that is that this name will now be bound to the same function. So this function now, which is an object in Python, has, in effect, this name referencing it and this name referencing it. It's because these arrows are the same. They're the same reference. They are the same value in terms of the fact that they're the memory address of where you'll find this function in the computer's memory. I've now taken the computer program that we've just considered, i.e. the one I added this line to, and I've further added to it with this code here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to run through the execution of this program and see what we get at the output and why. So let's have a look at the execution of this program, the runtime of this program, what it gives at the output. And we're going to get this. So let's now start at this point, And we know this is going to create a string where this variable will hold hello world. I will then print that to the screen, as you can see here. On this line, I'm going to make a call to this function, passing in hello world. So that hello world will now be referenced by this. This will then convert the hello world to all uppercase, assign it to here. On this line, that we then return this. And what that will return to is this position, where it's then assigned to this variable. I then print that variable, as you can see here, and it's hello world. I then print this, meaning give me some information on the function. And you can see it is a function whose name is two underscore uppercase, and it's at this hexadecimal address in the computer's memory. 
So that was a repeat of what I've already described in this video. If we come to this line, well, I've just described this, haven't I, on the last slide. When this executes, it means that this will be referring to this function and this will be referring to this function because both of these have the same object reference and the object is this function. So when I come on to this line now, what I'm doing, I'm setting up the variable my underscore text to be the string Fred blogs, not hello world as it was earlier and here I print out that and you can see it prints Fred blogs if I come to this line you can see here that I'm invoking I'm calling the function and the function I'm calling is this one and of course this function if you look here hasn't been defined has it as this name make underscore all underscore caps but what this line did it made this reference this function Consequently, this, which is holding Fred Bloggs, this now will reference it. On this line, we take Fred Bloggs, we convert it to uppercase, we assign that to this variable, and then we return that variable. So to this position, we'll get Fred Bloggs, all in uppercase, which is then assigned to this, and this line will then print that out, and you can see it prints out Fred Bloggs. When we come to here, we will print this, make all caps with the underscores, as you can see. And this is what it outputs. And look what it tells us. It tells us it's a function called to uppercase at this address. But of course, if you look, it's not called to underscore uppercase as it is here, as this is telling us. But what in fact this line is doing, it is saying, look, it's referencing this function. So we can see by the very fact that if we look at this line and this line, and in particular this hexadecimal number and this hexadecimal number we can see they're the same which means that the object reference in this and this are the same and this address is the address of this function so this has reference to this function and this has reference to the same function because here you can see their addresses their object references are the same so as an aside, and for us to reflect back on some previous work we've done, let's have a look at this computer program here. You can see on this line that X has been assigned 7, and on this line Y is assigned X. And if we look at the execution space for this, as we can see it here, what this line's going to do, it's going to give us the integer object and that integer object you can clearly see has got seven in the middle and of course we're going to get the name x and that's separate from the object remember in python we keep the names and the objects separate and this name is going to get the arrow as i like to show it but that's going to be the object reference that's going to be pointing to where the object is in the execution space and we're going to see that they are bound together Let's now consider what happens when we execute this line where y is assigned x. Well, I'm going to expand the execution space because I'm going to need more room to show what's going on. We're going to get the name y created, and this is going to receive the object reference from x. And when it does, it'll be bound to the integer object 7. So we can see, after the execution of these two lines, this is what we end up with. And these two names have the object reference to the same object. Now we can confirm this by looking at the runtime which is appearing now. And you can see what this line is doing. It's printing out this string, the value of x is, and here we're placing what x is, which we can see in the schematic diagram is the value of 7. And if you look to the runtime, there's the 7 in the place you would expect it to be. And here it says the id of x is. And this is taking the function, the id function, passing it x and asking what is its id. In other words, what is it holding? What's it storing? Well, it's storing the address of where the object is, and we can see that that ID appears here. When I come onto this line, it's now going to tell me the value of Y. Well, let's come down here. We can see that Y is referencing this object, and we can see it's 7. So in this position, we can see the 7. It's outputted the 7. And of course, we can then say, well, what's this outputting? The ID of Y, well, let's have a look. It's outputting this. And have a look at these IDs, and you can see they are 
identical. And that's because these two arrows are identical because they're pointing to the same object. So these two IDs here are both pointing to this because these IDs are the address of where this object is in the computer's memory. Let's now compare what we've just seen with the creation of the integer objects with what we get when we use functions in our Python code. Well, let's refer to the execution space and we know we'll get the function created as an object. The name of that function, we then will know we'll get the object reference, i.e. where that object is in the computer's memory, and we're saying they are bound together. Now, if I now assign this name to a different name, what we're going to get is this. We're going to get that name created. It's then going to get a copy of that object reference, so it'll now be bound to the same function. And you should see there's no difference, is there? The way in which this has worked, we can see the object reference is being passed from here to here, and both of these end up pointing to the same object. It's just that the object in this case is not an integer, it is a function. So the function is an object, even though that may sound odd. How could a function be an object? It is. It is an object in Python. So when you consider this assignment statement, y is assigned x, having previously given x a value of 7, what you're going to see when that has executed is this. And you can see that both x and y hold this address, which means they're both bound to the same integer object. When you see this here, what we're going to see is the following, the same layout, the same idea. These two names hold the same object reference to the same object. In other words, this name and this name, if you use them, will both cause the code in here to execute. And the function is treated as an object. I'd like to point out, if you look here, you can see in this area, I haven't put any brackets. If I were to put brackets here, Python would think you were trying to invoke the actual method. What this is doing without the brackets, it's taking the object reference, i.e. this arrow, and it's assigning it to this name, i.e. it's moving the arrow to here. We have seen that the assignment of a function, as shown in this video, very much treats the function as an object. The mechanism for function assignment results in a Python function being referred to as a first-class object. So when we think of a Python function, a Python function can be assigned to a variable, stored in a data structure, passed as an argument to another function, returned from another function. What I've shown in this video is just the first one assigned to a variable. The other three I will come back to in future videos. Now, these four facts about a Python function, together with the mechanism I've just described, means that when we think of a function in Python, we have to refer to the fact that a function is a first-class object. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?